Hello, today we're going to be covering water brushes or sometimes known as water pens. Either way, they are a tool we use in watercolor painting that we can bring with us wherever we go because there is a water tank attached to the brush. Uh, in this video, I'm going to dissect one, um, which will be fun. I already dissected one and I plan on dissecting another so we can actually get a look at how they work and um, how to kind of problem solve which kind you like and if something goes wrong, how you can look and see if you can possibly fix it before getting a new one because it's you know nice to use what you got instead of ordering more. I've got a few different brands that I'll be using, not really recommending a certain one, but just showing you the differences. Um, some have been gifted to me, some I've purchased of my own accord, uh, but I'm just looking at how they're similar and how they're different. What I mainly use these for is traveling. Now you don't have to use them when you travel. You could use them at home all the time when you're painting, but they do really help with convenience because you don't need to balance a water cup on your knee at the park if you're painting. So you can really paint anywhere in any situation without the mess or the hassle of an actual water cup, but it's all right here in the brush. As well as going over what they are and how they work, I'll give you a few tips for using them and feeling successful so that when you do take them with you and go painting, you actually walk away with a painting or a sketch that you like. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, I've got a few things here ready for us to look at. First, let's go through the brushes because that's what you're here for. So I have three different um, brands of brush. You can get them all on Amazon. That's where I found most of them. Uh, actually, you can't get this one on Amazon, but I'll leave a link for it. So this one is a Upins brand. It's the first brand I ever got of these and I still really love them. This one you can tell I've used a lot um, because it's really gross, which I'm also gonna talk about. I have not looked closely at this for a while and I'm very, very sure there's mold growing in it. So that's gonna be an upkeep thing we'll chat about. And I left it gross so that you can see the difference if we don't let it air out and dry every once in a while. So that's that brand, Upins. I'll leave the link in the description. This next one is by, um, I always call it Funto Art, but it's spelled like fun to, like fun to do things. Um, not sure what the actual goal of the name is, but. Funto Art. Um, they gifted me a set of paints. I have these with me here as well. It's a whole travel set. Um, and so I wanted to show you what those look like. I've done other videos about that set. So I figured I'd include that one. Um, and here's the brush by them. And then this one is a really, you know, it's really small, which is kind of fun. It's like a little mini one. And this one came with a little sketchbook. So I actually ordered a set of four, which that's just what it came in. These are by um dispo wreath is the brand and again on amazon you buy like a set of four little sketchbooks with four little water brushes which i think is the cutest thing because you could have like a group of friends go water paint together or i mean watercolor paint but like in plein air so coming with a sketchbook is super fun and handy because i love using a sketchbook when i use these paints so i'll talk about that more later now the size is really just preference. If you're trying to fit it in a tiny space, the longer brush might not be ideal. However, I do notice that I tend to run out of water in these because I use a lot of water with mine. So this big one is nice to have a lot of water in it. Um, the size, the shapes are different, depends on how you like to hold it. This one is kind of built to be easy to squeeze to get the water out of it because it has this way you hold it. This one has, it says push right on it so that you can see where to push the easiest way to do it. It's a much stronger thicker plastic so it's harder to press so in one sense like good quality but also like hard to get the water out um, and this one's very easy to squeeze um, just tube and so there's not like a specific way to press the water out of it but it's still easy to get the water out because the plastic is thinner so easy to squeeze in that way now you'll notice that there is a brush there's this kind of darker area inside the plastic there's the um, connection where you can twist it on and off and then there's the tube for the water so that's kind of the basic anatomy of the brush now if we open one of these also by the way sometimes different brands twist different ways this one twists lefty loosey to get it off which is how i'm used to twisting things off however it took me so long to figure out how to take this one off because this one is right to take it off you twist it right so just don't like don't do what i did which was almost take a plier to get it off the wrong way so just try both ways see which way loosens it up more because for some reason some brushes are different let's see this one's also a right 
to get it off. So I don't know if it depends on where it's made in the world or just the engineering of it all, who knows, but I learned that the hard way. Okay, I have already dissected one of them. So this one, when I got it, um, it started awesome and was doing really well. And then it became harder and harder to get the water to come out of it. And so I emailed Funto and I was telling them about the problem and they went and tested a few of their other brushes and they're like, we don't have a problem with our other brushes. We're really sorry. They sent me a new one to replace it. Um, so I decided I would just dissect this one to kind of see how they work and problem solve it because it doesn't seem to be an issue they have very often. Uh, but since I had the issue, I might as well look inside. So I've actually kind of broken this one a little bit because I had to, to take it apart, it kind of had to get broken. So normally it doesn't look that bad when it's brand new. Um, also, almost any water brush eventually starts to change color. You can see the new ones are all bright white, but like this one I've used a lot, this one I've used a lot, they change color just because the dyes of the pigments of your paint are gonna soak into it. So that's not really the end of the world, um, but just a, something to observe. Okay. So I dissected this one. So let's take it apart again. Um, first by opening it up. Actually, I had my husband help me because he enjoys um, problem solving. He is an engineer. He's a, in fact a test engineer. So his job is to like test things and see how they work. So we took a pliers to it and we just um, kind of ended up pushing this part down and through the plastic. So here, push the brush back and took it out of the plastic. So here's what it looks like inside that clear plastic. You can see the tip of the bristles here, goes inside, kind of gets condensed. There's this little just foam guy, I'm guessing just to keep things you know, secure. Um, but if we move him, we can see these bristles go all the way through and then they're kind of attached here. So you can even kind of move this little plastic. I bet I could take this piece off too. Now what this also had when I was taking apart was this wick. So this little white oval was inside like this. So I kept thinking something was stuck in it when I would look inside because this would be inside here. And I'd look inside and I'd go, there's something stuck inside. No wonder it's not taking water up. But what I figured out is that this wick is supposed to be there. Um, what it does is it just kind of controls how much water is taken up or coming out of the brush. So if the wick wasn't there, then it takes a lot more water and would shoot a lot more water out to the tip. So the wick is there on purpose um, to make sure that the water doesn't come out too quickly, which now that I've put it back in, I don't know if I'm really get it out again. So I'm going to save that for my own personal struggles um, because I looked at the new one. So here's what it looks like when it's brand new. You can see a bright white dot because that wick hasn't been um, soaked in or changed by the colors of the paint yet versus this one is turned a little green because I do tend to use a lot of green. Um, so that's what changed the color. It doesn't really affect its usage, but an interesting thing because not all water brushes have the wick. So some water brushes do let the water come out more quickly. This one is one of the ones I plan to take apart today to see because I can't see the wick from where I look. And this also has a much longer like inside, look how much bigger that is. So I'm really curious what's different between them. Um, this one has kind of the same short body uh, and it also does not have a wick. So I'm guessing the water, this looks almost the same on the inside. It's got that spot for the wick, but there's nothing there. So it probably would have water come out faster. So it's honestly personal preference, whether you want the water to come out more slowly or more quickly, depending on what you're painting. So it's not really a bad or a good thing, but it's helpful to be aware of. And then when you're trying brushes and you're wondering why it's acting different than other brushes, you can peek and say, hey, is there a wick that's slowing down the water? Do I like that? Do I not? Um, and just experiment. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can do the same kind of thing with this one uh, by getting this outside of the plastic so we can take a better look. Okay, this has been very hard to dissect, if you can tell. Um, I'm never gonna really use this one again, but that's okay, that's totally fine. So what's interesting is there's these, this part that like makes it longer is just like a cap. Like look at the inside, that looks exactly like 
this. It has the same spot like for a wick, but there's actually, I don't think there's a wick in there. It looks like it's completely open. So this is another one where the water would come out very quickly because now it's the same mechanism. Like look, it's even exactly the same size. So really they are all the same. I don't know why this is in it. I mean, it doesn't hurt it. So it's not like a downside to it, but it does just make it longer. I don't know if it, yeah, I don't really know what this part is, but the rest is exactly the same as the other ones. So the brushes are gonna go down, get condensed, and then there's a spot for a wick to be, but there's they chose to not put a wick in it. So now that we know what the inside of these things look like, let's talk about how to use them, some tips. I'm gonna clean up my workspace and get this sketchbook going and we'll talk about how to use these. Okay, I have these three paintbrushes that we've been looking at and we're gonna try using them to talk about how uh, they actually work and function when you're painting. I have with me a little travel set. This travel set actually is what came with this brush. So this is the one by Funto Art. They gifted the set to me um, to do an Instagram thing. And then um, this sketchbook is what came with this piece. This was the Dispo Wreath set of four that I talked about that came together. Um, and then this brush is the uh, U-Pins brush, and it's the one that came in a long set, um, or a big set of multiple sizes. So this is the biggest one that I believe it came in the set. I've never actually used the biggest one. I don't tend to bring a lot of brushes with me when I go to paint out and about, so I tend to bring one that I like the size of. So I've never used the big one, but if you would like to have a variety of sizes, having just a set of just brushes like these is a great way to do it versus getting a set with one brush or just a sketchbook with one brush. So all of them have their advantages. So think about what's best for you. Now, I'm gonna be using the sketchbook to uh, practice with these because I love to use water brushes in sketchbooks because this is what I tend to pack with me if I go to paint somewhere. Um, if you take a look, all I need is this, whatever brands I combine to paint somewhere. Paint, sketchbook, paintbrush, and actually I always bring this too. This is all I need to paint. Now this is a sweatband, which is very handy because it's a towel to wipe your brush off on, but you actually get to wear it. So I don't have to balance anything. I don't have to balance a cup of water because I have the water in here. I don't have to bring a towel or find a paper towel to that might blow away in the wind. I just wear it on my wrist. So this is kind of my to-go setup. I love it. It's very easy. It fits in my purse, fits in its own little bag. I can take it anywhere. All right, so normally when I'm sketching, I bring it somewhere to any random event. So here I brought it with me to an artist mingle at my church. That's something we do as um, artists. We have really amazing community of artists at our church, writers, actors, uh, musicians, some visual artists, like it's any kind of artist. Uh, super fun. So I did a little sketch while we were hanging out and chatting. There were more people around, but I just simplified and focused in on the couch across the room for me. It was in our church basement. So you can see the classic low ceilings and wood doors and fun donated couches and furniture and whatnot. It's a great space. So this is typically my style if I'm sketching really quick on the go. So I'm going to do a little sunset painting with this little crab today, just to show you how the supplies work and to do something quick and fun. So we'll use this today to our practice. I'm gonna go through every brush in a different part of the painting. So I'm gonna start with the small brush. This one does not have a wick, so it should have the water come out fairly quickly. Since I'm gonna be doing a wash in the sky, that's pretty handy because I want a lot of water. Now to actually get the water out, all you do is squeeze. So I'm gonna get some yellow for my sky. So I'm gonna squeeze, start by squeezing gently, especially since I know that this one comes out kind of quick and then wipe that bit of water onto the paint to wake it up, just like a regular watercolor painting. Now, I'm going to kind of drip a few drips of water on my sky because I know I'm making a wash, and now I can spread that water around. The big thing to kind of learn is how your brush distributes water or how quickly or uh, slowly it comes out, and then how to do a wash versus a dry brush and that kind of stuff. So I've got plenty of water now, just like in uh, normal watercolor painting, it's hard to go lighter, but what I can do is I can wipe off the extra, then I can come back and I can lift some of the paint, wipe it off, 
lift some of the paint, wipe it off. So I'm not really cleaning my brush, I'm just wiping off extra water to lighten or to fade my sky. Now, if I actually wanna clean my brush off, I just squeeze my brush, squeeze the water, and wipe that water around. Squeeze the water, wipe it around. So this is kind of letting all that paint come out and now it's clean. So now if I paint, there's no color on it. Okay, so I'm gonna go to some red to mix in my sunset and put some red at the top since it's still wet. I can blend that down and make it into some orange in the middle here. Red at the top and blend it down. So it, the general theory of watercolor still applies to water brushes. It's just a different uh, awareness and different, you know, just different methods, I guess. So same techniques, but practicing with a new tool, just like anything else, it just takes some practice. So I've got a little bit of sunset fade. I want a little more. So I'm gonna grab a bit more and fade it down. Okay, I had created a highlight, um, a horizon line in advance. So I'm gonna use that to decide where to stop. I'm gonna wash my brush completely because I'm gonna jump to the water. Now, if you know watercolor, if I don't let the sky dry, then my water down here, this ocean is gonna bleed up into the sky. So the same rules still apply as I've mentioned, but when you're painting outside, there's a lot more air movement, there's wind, there's heat, and your watercolors are gonna dry a lot faster. So whether that's good or bad, you just need to be aware of it. So while I'm waiting for this, this might actually dry super fast if I was outside, but I'm doing this in my studio today. So it could be easier to do this outside, but also that means I have less time to make my blends or my washes because it would dry faster. Something to pay attention to, check your paper, look how shiny it is. It's already drying pretty quick even in my studio. So I think I'm ready for the ocean water. I'm gonna drip a little bit of water. Oop, that was kind of a lot of water onto my blue paint over here, wake it up. Now I'm gonna do a little bit of paint on this side, a little paint on this side, and I'm gonna try to make it where I can leave some white in the middle for highlights of the sky. So I'm gonna kind of push the two paints towards the middle while they're still wet. I don't want any hard edges to form. But once I'm close to the middle, I'm going to stop, I'm gonna wipe my brush off, not clean it, but just wipe it off and I'm gonna to try to use some dry brush. That kind of worked. I didn't quite get it dry enough, but you can see a few of those white lines I kept. I'm gonna maybe do some darker at the sides just to create more contrast so that those white lines in the middle are easier to see. Now I'm also not really following the rules of real life here because if it's sunset, I wouldn't really have white reflections. I'm pretty sure I would have, you know, sunset reflections, but I wanted to show you two different techniques. So here we are. All right, that gives me some more of those white reflection lines. Okay, there's a reason that this is not a how to paint tutorial and it's a how brushes work because this does not make sense, but that's okay. You can check out my other tutorials to actually learn how to paint things. Now rocks, I've washed my brush, so I squeezed some water, I rinsed it around, I wiped it off. I'm gonna get some brown and put a light value of brown on my rocks. Now I did not wait for my water to dry, so this could bite me in the butt. Oh, we'll see, I think I'm doing okay so far. Watch out for those wet edges, touching wet edges. That's when things bleed when you're not expecting them to. While it's still wet, I'm gonna get some black and kind of drip it in to make shadows. I could make shadows with hard edges too because rocks are a rough surface, but I wanna have some variety. So I'm gonna add some softer, more subtle changes with little bits of brown and black, and then I can always go back when it dries and add harder edges if I want to. Make sure to leave some light for highlights. I'm gonna add a little shadow under my crabby guy and down in this crack. All right, that's probably good enough. Rocky texture, interesting thing. All right, cleaning off my brush again by squeezing the water and wiping it off. Now I'm gonna get a little bit of red for my crab. I like to have my red with a little bit of brown because then the red is not so vibrant because otherwise my crab might look fake. So I want it to be more of a brown red. And I'm going to just very carefully, he's pretty tiny, so I'm not gonna be able to stay in the lines perfectly but drip in a little bits of red on his legs and his body and his arms and whatnot. Red crab, that's all I really need. Once again, wash it off, squeeze, wipe around, good to go. When I'm not using my brush, I wanna keep my cap on it because this cap protects the brush from getting damaged. I can stick it in my purse, 
it can roll around, it can get bumped against things, and it's not going to get damaged or smashed. But without the cap, it is more at risk of breaking or splitting or doing funny things, and then I can't put it back together. So make sure it's taken care of with the cap. I would suggest that when you get home from your adventure out and about to take apart your water brush, dump out the extra water, and just let it air dry. This is going to keep that mold from building like it did in this one. So this one is really gross and brown. I got to probably just throw that one. I'll throw it with this cap I dissected. So I don't really need an extra body of the brush anyways. But if you do not have a broken pen, then just let it dry or wash it out. So when you're not using them, take them apart, take the water out. That's going to help them last longer and not grow mold and be gross and all that good stuff. I really like to bring this with me. So this is one of my tips for you is having a sweatband like this. It's really a game changer for some strange reason. Having a smaller set of paint is also super helpful. And then of course your water brush. So whichever type you choose, I'll have all the descriptions and the links for these in the description below. Uh, but you get to pick which one you like. If you find another brand you like, let me know. I'd love to know what else is out there. Again, they all work generally the same as we saw when we dissected them. They all have the brush, they all have a spot for the water to go through, and the, just the different size brushes, different size tanks, different ways of holding them, whatever one you prefer, roll with that give it a try. I hope you try painting outside. That's way more fun than being inside like this. I'm going to be doing some more videos on actually more of the technique of painting outside, but I wanted to make sure you were prepared with your tools and your supplies before I really dove into those details. So that is our overview of water brushes. And there you have it. Now you know the ins and outs of water brushes, pen brushes, pen water things, whatever you call them, and you're ready to take them with you and create some masterpieces out and about or maybe still in your home and you just decide to try something new. Either way is totally fine, but hopefully you feel a little more confident about what they are, how they work, and how to use them. Now, if this was helpful for you to learn more about these brushes, check out the description below for more resources and things, classes, courses, videos, um, ebooks, all sorts of things that you can check out to help you in your watercolor adventure. And then of course, as they say, like and subscribe so that we can share this with other people. I want to create a community of people who experience the joy that watercolor brings. When we're creating, it allows us to see the world in a whole new way, especially painting on the go, which is what these help with because you get to be out and about observing the world and how it works and the beautiful tones, tints, shades, textures, values, just blending and interesting light on colors. It's all so gorgeous and I want you to experience it as well as others. So let me know what your thoughts are. If you're going to be getting one of these, what was most surprising about the brushes, maybe the inside of it or how they work. And I can't wait to see you in another video. So happy painting. Water, wa water brushes, pens. I don't know what to call these.